YouTube, it's your boy Nixon coming back with another video here today on the channel. Another bullseye of a video, and another tip I wanted to talk about today is how to add a little bit of uh, cohesiveness, a little bit of gel and warmth to your mix. How to get um, also more depth using tape. So today, what I have here is the UAD Empirical Labs Fat So, a plugin that I've been using a lot lately, and I've been seeing really good results with it. So I wanted to talk about, um, you know, kind of how tape can help you open up your mix so i have a song right here that i, I recently mixed for one of my a really good artists that i work with is peanut i'll drop the link down below let's play it um you know without the uh, fat so and let's go over how this plugin is i feel like very overpowered it's a glitch it's like a cheat code to rap music it can be used for all genres but let's play the um you know song without it and let's hear how we were able to improve it so let's go Clothes. Don't say it, just do it. And we step, you better mean it. Ten steps, hey, you fall, niggas run up, get bust, fall, nigga, get money, cold heart, block heart, switch spot. Who gon' take a loss? Not me, phone ring alone, as I got a fiend. I'ma keep doubling the profit. If I see a child of school on my turf, this gon' be a crime scene. I don't do no pump fake, a bitch, you heard it speaking on my name. I keep it too real for you, nigga, just to throw shade, stat two, stat that money in. So that was the mix I did for, uh, you know, this great artist right here, Peanut, which I will link down below again if you guys are interested in getting any mixes or anything like that or any coaching or any advice or, you know, just saying hello, hit me up on Instagram down below. I'm always open to talk. So let's go over the uh, fat. So in this little chain that I kind of have right here. So the very first thing I want to talk about is the um, analog tape. I have oxide tape right here. So with the tape, the beautiful thing about tape is that it kind of already gives you like compression, right? And a little bit of EQ and saturation and all of these things that, you know, maybe you'd probably have to use many plugins or many different moves to make. You can kind of get a simplified outcome of it through tape, right? So I'm finding myself a lot lately using a lot of tape. I've been studying the game, which you guys should always be doing too. That's a tip, you know, study the craft, always try to get better. But one thing about the tape is that I've been learning about the tape speeds, you know, how different instruments get affected by it. whoop de whoop -de. You know, this, there's a, like a little EQ, a makeup EQ. Because sometimes when you put something on tape, you kind of lose fidelity and everything. But um, on to the main point is with the oxide tape, what I'm liking a lot about the oxide tape right now is that, um, you know, it's just adding so much character and so much vibe. Just any tape in general. I would tell you guys to experiment with tape because it kind of does the compression. And the EQ, it's kind of already built in, right? So it's a little bit more foolproof for those people who are struggling with, you know, compression and EQ. You know, sometimes, you know, just try to work with a little bit of tape, you know, because the tape will kind of do that for you. And depending on how hard you drive the tape, you will get more compression or more of a boost at certain frequencies. Like a certain speed, like 7.5, will give a little bump in the, uh, you know, lower frequencies, right? And the 15 is kind of like, you know, it's kind of... I would say it's the flattest one, the most transparent speed, in my opinion. Then you have the 30 speed, which is very bright, you know, so you can add brightness and, uh, you know, smoothness to the high end of a vocal or whatever it is, you know, a rap, you know, instrument, right? You can do that without having to use all this EQ and compression if you just use tape. So there's many great tape emulators out there. I personally love uh, J37 by Waves, the Kramer Master Tape. I've been using the Oxide lately, though, and I have the Studer by UAD um as well so uh, another thing that we have right here before we start talking about the fat so right but tape in general i like to use the input and the out uh, output to catch a tone right so when i'm using this uh fat so chain in general the first thing i have is my beat right so um let's kind of hear what the fat so is doing to the uh beat you know i like to parallel on um, my beat Usually, I what I did in the beginning is I used to try to use like 1176. I tried to use a bunch of different parallel compressors 
on my tube track beat to add some of that um, quality that can be lost you know you download it from youtube and then you convert it sometimes a little bit of that quality can be lost you know it happens of course but i just love using a, a little bit of parallel on my two track beat to add a little bit of juice add a little bit of depth and set the stage for how i want the whole um, mix to go so let's hear how um you know what the fat soul will be doing to the two track beat the beat. And the first thing that you can notice, right, is it makes the piano sound a little bit more deeper. It's using harmonic frequency specifically with the fat so and the combination of the tape as well. I'm using that to add more, uh, you know, I think it's second and third order harmonics specifically with these settings that I'm kind of using. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it's just adding more width and more weight to that piano. OK, so let's t start talking about the fat so a little bit. So I turn on the tranny. And, you know, this is modeling a transformer, right? So this is what I always try to tell you guys specifically that, you know, like these components all kind of have a sound to it, you know? So sometimes you can be pretty strategic. Like you can say, oh, I want to use a tube uh, type compressor or whatever, a tube EQ, because I feel like that's going to, you know, give me the function without me having to do too much work you know so with the tranny it kind of uh, does something in the range of the 40 like the lower uh, can i say the lower sub frequencies you know it kind of just pulls things forward it pulls the vo uh the vocal forward as well but uh really quickly just to jump back to this oxide tape what i like to do is i like to um you know adjust my oxide tape while I adjust my fat. So and this is what I always talk about. You know, the order of the plugins and the output volume of the plugin is important because you can you can whack a plugin really hard and get a certain sound, or you could make it like very low and drive the input of this. You know, fat so right here, which is a soft clipping matrix, um, and it will give you a certain sound. So that's a real big tip I want you guys to focus on, like a laser. Like, yo, I could make this one plugin loud going into that other plugin to give me a certain sound, right? To give me more edge or to give me more vibe or whatever it is that you want, you know, always pay attention to the output volume that you're, you're using in, in regards to like the sequence of the plugins, cool. So all right, next thing that I like about the Fat Soul a lot is let's bring it in for the vocal, right? The Fat Soul has a beautiful magic way of, a, you know, because it's a tape emulator, it has a way of uh, kind of being used like as a de -esser. Some people like to use it as a de -esser. So you got to understand, too, that with tape, it has like a smoothing of the high end. That's a natural characteristic of the tape. So in a situation like this, uh, my vocal was kind of already very smooth because I did coach my artist and make sure that, you know, he wasn't, um, you know, coming up to the microphone unnecessarily close, you know, to prevent, you know, all that unnecessary, uh, you know, sibilance that could come through sometimes. And I drove my input very hard, too. So I was already kind of getting some of that smoothing. From the oxide tape anyway so my uh fat so isn't working too hard but the beautiful thing is that the fat so has a warm circuit right and this warm circuit right here it models you know the uh the the way that analog tape handles the high-end frequencies and the release is kind of like instantaneous it's a very quick release so usually when I get started up on the fat so I, I, I play around with my input a little bit I keep it on you know something medium and then I start scrolling through the warmths, you know. I, I like to uh, use the fat soul in a way, kind of like a mixed bus compressor, but it's in parallel. So if you're using like, a, you know, rap specifically, like a two track beat, it's very hard to use mixed bus compression because that 808 just gonna be hitting so hard, you know, unless you have a side chain filter, of course, but you know, usually when I'm, I'm working with a, a two track beat in the vocal, I don't use mixed bus compression because sometimes that bus compression can eat up all the, the low end, it can eat up all the punch, it can eat up all the whole dynamics of the whole entire song. So let's look at this warp circuit and let's scroll through it. I always keep it on some light numbers 
and uh, usually this right here would indicate how much uh, you know high end limiting you're doing and this right here is the compressor um, portion so it's like a hybrid baby you know this one is taking care of the um, harsh top and the uh, compressor circuit right portion of the uh, fat so is giving us the compression for you know pretty much the whole other part of the frequency spectrum so you guys got to think about that too you know maybe chaining uh tape emulators and compressors together to do a little bit here a little bit there and it will all add up collectively rather than making drastic eq and compression moves cool so the next thing that we have right here is um the bus portion of the empirical labs fat so right and I like to also use the um, fat so on my parallel compressor um, chain. I have like a few parallel compressors. And what I like to do is uh, send my entire parallel um, chain, right, into a, another tape. And I'm not driving it at all. I'm gonna take a loss, not me. Phone ring alarms, I got no fiends. I'm gonna keep doubling the profit. If I see a child of school on my turf, this is gonna be a crime scene. I don't do no pump thing, a bitch, too. Heard it speaking on my name. I keep it too real for you, nigga. Just to throw shade, stack. So I love using saturators in general. That's another tip that you guys can do. You know, you of course you want to use a little bit of parallel compression on your vocal because the parallel compressor is a little bit better than just bringing up the fader of your vocal because it's giving you that dense signal, right? And with that hard 808, you know, you might be in situations with a song where you're like, damn, that 808 is just hitting so hard to the point where it's overpowering the vocal. But then you might think the answer to that is to bring up the level of the vocal, right? Maybe I gotta just bring up the level of the vocal, but then it's, it's, it still might not sound right. So think about that too. Sometimes adding a little bit more parallel compression is a, a good way to help fight a hard hit in 808. Of course we want our 808s to hit hard, but we gotta make sure our vocal is also cutting through. So parallel compression is good. And I like to enhance my parallel compression with saturation whether that be Abbey Road saturator or um, saturation knob, or maybe even putting a Kramer master tape at the end. I'm always auditioning different types of saturators at the end of my parallel compressor, you know? So once you use the parallel compressor, that's not just it, you know? You still should add a little bit more because it's gonna give a little bit more contrast going up against the uh, lead, of, lead vocal, you know? So that's what parallel compression is really about. It's not about just smashing it. Even with the fat so, I don't like to smash the fat so. I like to only use it for about 1 to 3 dB, which is what I would recommend. You can uh, do whatever you want. Of course, there is no limits to what you do. You know, whatever works for the song is always the first priority. But with the fat so, I don't like to hit it too hard, maybe 1 to 3, because I am doing compression, and I know that I'm doing sometimes on different songs, I'm using the warp circuit as well, right? So, um, you know, saturating the parallel compressor, very important, cool. Now, the next thing I like to do is I, I have a, a fader, right? Uh, I would recommend you guys do this technique too, you know? Um, have an aux input that has all of your vocals. So maybe after you go ahead and listen to the track, right? In the track, you maybe you feel like, oh, I got to rebalance things, right? Right? Or maybe the vocals just isn't loud enough. Rather than having to, like, move around everything, right? You can just have all of your vocals in one fader and control it like that. So that's what I did right here. And, of course, another Oxide tape. I'm just vibing with the tape so much. Let's just hear it. Pretty speaking on my name. I keep it too rare for you nigga. Just to throw shade. Stat two. Stat that money in the shoe. Fault. Hey, and not reload the clip. Hit it lit. Burn the fit. Trying to make a fault. Nigga for my pain. What you know about them hard days and nights on the block. Never stay in one spot too long. But stat is dope. No, no cracker watch. Had a weird feeling. Then them crackers started blitzing. Fuck you. Bitch, I been on my pivot. Been on my pivot. Stat, stat three. Keep a smile on your face. Don't never let the fuck niggas in. You ain't star with me. Say you gotta do it the time by yourself. No friend. What the fuck? Bitch, I was insane, sir. With my brother. I'ma make the fuck nigga feel my pain. Yeah. So you're already hearing in a, a situation like this, the way a harmonic distortion is handling it is adding clarity, right? I didn't have to crank up more top end on the vocal, or I didn't have to do any type of compression on my all vocal ox because I had tape. 
and that's what the tape does you know the, the the tape distortion the speed as well plays into it but you see how i was able to make my vocal my whole vocals sound brighter just by running it through tape input and output is the same exact thing so it's not just the level it's just the tape speed and of course the character characteristics of the tape now there is um a little bit of compensation eq because just the way tape works when you run tape through something when it's coming back through the uh, playback head and the record head whoop de whoop you know there will be a little bit of fidelity that is lost that's why you know they call it lo-fi because the fidelity is lower right and um you know these are compensation curves this one i believe is the uh, north american one which has a little bit more bottom and this is the european version right here which is another compensation eq curve right i want to talk about the compression parts of the fat so so the very first part we have right here is the bus compressor which is kind of modeling like a two to one soft knee right which is what i always try to talk to you guys about the ratio in the knee as well is gonna determine how the compressor is working right so this is the bus compressor right and this would be good too you know for like a, a many uses right this is the uh gp um, which is like a medium type of setting. General purpose is what it stands for, right? So it has a medium, uh, medium attack, I believe, and uh, pretty much, I believe the release is slow. So it's very consistent um, RMS level-wise. And the Fatso is great for adding more perceived loudness as well, right? The saturation, the way it uh, handles the second, third order harmonics and everything like that, the way it's modeling like a transformer, or tube circuit or magnetic tape as well will also play into you know giving you more pumping more perceived loudness more just vibe more swag more everything so you should consider that too the next thing that we have is a spank button right and the spank button is pretty much like a limiter right uh, a, a, a limiter um, with a, a very high ratio and um, I don't generally uh, use it because I feel like it closes the sound um, you know, that's just the overall essence of kind of the way limiters work with that huge ratio and that fast attack, just everything. It kind of gives you like a closed sound. So I don't really use it like that. But I believe that the fat soul would be great for drum bus compression, 808s, kicks, all of that stuff. And, um, you know, I like to just use one fat soul and just send, you know, a varying amounts into the fat soul because it's like me doing a mix bus compressor but getting all the benefits but not the side effects you know because i get to keep all my transients right but uh still get the punch and the openness of the compression next thing that we have here is the tracking so when this light is green and yellow it gives you the tracking um it gives you the, like a tracking um type of uh, setting which is pretty good for like vocals and stuff like that so uh yeah that's pretty much all that we have right here i'm just gonna bypass the um vocal and the fat so in and out and the last thing i have right here i want to talk about is my low shelf what i've been doing lately is i've been sending all of my uh reverb delay everything on to one fader so i can you know like i said control it a little bit easier once i have everything working together right once i got everything speaking together which is the most important part of engineering making the reverb delay you know everything speak together you know once you already have those balances you kind of don't want to change them so that's why I send everything to one fader. And if I feel like I do want to pull it back or maybe even automate it at a certain part, I do that. So I have a low shelf, right, on all of my effects. Uh, and it just adds a little bit of openness, right? But I also take that EQ and I use it on the fat so too. Because when I'm sending like the, the whole B and then the vocal and everything, it can kind of get a little bit muddy. And that's not what I'm looking for for my fat. So I'm looking for more openness, more warmthness more uh depth as well so let's bring the fat soul in and out and let's hear um you know just how you know it just really made this song i've been using the fat soul on every single song lately clients they just been like taking the, the the music they just been taking it clients have just been taking the music and they haven't been saying anything they just say wow it sounds great i have no comments you know so um that's that feels really good as an engineer of course i love getting feedback but it feels really good when i know that not only my ear, but the tools that I'm using are putting me in a situation where I can just get my idea across, send it to the client, and they take it, and they love it, and it's not it's, it's already good, fam. It's not much more I can say than that. So I just love that feeling. So let's bring the fat so in and out. And we step, you better mean it. Kill the Ten step, hey, you fall, niggas run up, get bust, fall, niggas get money, cold heart, block heart, switch spot, who gon' take a loss, not me, phone ring. I'm a key double in the profit. If I see a child of school, I'm a 
Sir, this gon' be a crime scene. I don't do no pump fake. A bitch, you heard it speaking on my name. I keep it too real for you, nigga. Just a throw shade. Stat two, stack that money in the shoe. Fuck, hey, and not reload the clip. Hit it lit, burn the fit. Tryna make a fuck, nigga, for my pain. What you know about them hard days and nights on the block? Never stay in one spot too long. Stat it dope, no, no kind of watch. Had a weird feeling, then them crackers started blitzing. Fuck you, bitch, I been on the pivot. And let's play that part back again. I feel like the fat soul helps add that depth where when that little drop come in, that little ad lib effect I did, when it come in, it's just like, whoa. Like, it feels more realistic when I have the fat soul. So I'm going to bring it in and out. Burn the fit, trying to make a fault, nigga, for my pain. What you know about them hard days and nights on the block? Never stay in one spot too long. Stat is dope, no, no kind of watch. Had a weird feeling, then them crackers started blitzing. Fuck you, bitch, I been on the pivot. So I feel like in a situation without the fat, so I feel like I'm losing some width, some depth. I feel like I'm losing a lot. But that's the good thing about the compressor, you know, just the way it's like a hybrid setup of the top and the bottom. It just kind of like, it just gives that separation, you know. The compressor's doing what it's got to do, you know, to the uh, 808 and everything like that. And the bottom of the record and the top is doing what it's got to do. Even though it's not working right now, that's how I, I generally use it, right? And let's bring the transformer in and out and listen to how the beat, the hip hop beat actually changes. So that's why the fat soul is so versatile. You could just use it on the beat straight up. So I'm gonna just solo this. I'm gonna show you what the transformer sounds like with and without it and how you can use the fat soul to juice up your 808s, your kicks, your whole two track beat and you know, use it in parallel, you know? It's gonna help you enhance your transient. So let's listen to the tranny, uh, transformer in and out. So I just love how the fat soul works in a great, I just love how the fat soul works in so many great ways. It's so versatile and it's helping me just make my mix sound bigger, wider, deeper, just making it feel like real life, right? So this has been a, a pretty good video today. I just want to say thanks a lot. If you guys did learn anything, uh, let me know down below if you have any more questions or any ideas for videos drop it down below i just want to say i really appreciate you my youtube family thanks a lot for being a great part of the channel more to come peace Peace.